All right, heroin affects everyone. You guys heard this all. I can tell you that in the city of West Dallas, um, it's not just, we always think of the kids with the drug problems. Uh, unfortunately, I went to a drug overdose the other day and it was the 18 year old that was coming home from school that found his dad there. Okay, that's the kind of stuff we're running into. Um, it does, it affects everybody from old to young. Um, I will tell you that typically we don't see it in the schools uh, on a positive. Um, our age group is average between 18 and 40. That's the largest amount, but it goes up to 50s, 60s. These are people that have been prescribed pain medication and they don't get it anymore. That's one of the nice things. We're getting our doctors not to prescribe as much, but the problem is then the kids can't or the kids or the people can't get involved and find their drugs anymore. So what they do is they go to the next option and that's heroin. So quite honestly, listening to the other people I've talked today, I see that this is gonna be a bigger problem before it gets done. Because people are actually, we are going to stop having so many drugs out on the street. We do drug pickups, we have places to drop drugs off. Um, we actually even go into our senior care facilities in the city of West Dallas and we actually have people that live there drop our drugs off because they're not realizing that their son or daughter, their nieces and nephews are coming in to visit them. And these are people that are elderly, so they still believe that medication belongs in the medicine cabinet. And when the kids come over, they visit them and they always wonder why the first stop they have to make is the bathroom. Just have to use the bathroom for a minute. And we're kind of enlightening them and having them hide their prescriptions, put them away. But again, if they don't get their prescription medication, ultimately they go to the next step. Um, that's the normal prescriptions they talked about already. They talked about oxycodone, your Percocet, your morphine, your Vicodin. Um, why do they do it? And it, it says teens. I didn't put this program together, our drug guy did. So, but he said to get high, the teens, but that's even adults. Adults will do it for the same reason, to get high or to take care of discomfort. Remember one of our favorite heroes on the Packers was actually addicted to drugs, Brett Favre. He had access to it, he was on drugs, he took them, he got, it, he got hooked on them. He had a same, but he could get the drugs anytime he wanted, didn't have to go to that next step. Sometimes kids take it because they go through depression, bad grades, uh, to perform better in sports. Actually, so a lot of the kids in college, it was, it was actually amazing when he talked about a kid that was 4.0, who had a perfect grade point average, and he was going to college, never made it to 20. One of the reasons we're actually finding out is some of these kids are getting Adderall, and they're taking it while they're at college, so they function better, so they can slow down, they can study, they can focus better. And these are good kids. They're trying to do better though. Um, sometimes, uh, again, curiosity, injury, addiction, that's where it often happens. I mean, when we think of people taking heroin, you think, oh, they're bad people, they're drug addicts, they're this or that. These are hardworking people. They had a back injury. Brett Favre, who had injuries. He was just trying to make himself available to play. That's what a lot of these people are doing and they can actually function on this heroin. It's amazing, they can take heroin and go to work. Just like Brett Favre did. He took his pain medication and went to work. Where do the teens get these prescriptions? They get them from families, friends, and relatives in the medicine cabinet. That's why we talk about people about trying to keep that stuff locked up, put away, hid. Um, it, it's something we wouldn't typically think about. And I can tell you most of the older people, when I tell them these things, they just are aghast that my grandson or my son or daughter could be coming to my house or to my living place and taking my medications. And just so you know, I'm sure you guys all know this, most of the people that take these medications don't take them like you and I would. We take a pill, okay, it says take one every two hours or one every four hours or two every four hours. They don't take them that way anymore. They'll start that way. Then when the effect doesn't get quite as good, they take those tablets and they have these little things called pill crushers. Grind it up real fine, 
right in their nose. Goes right to their brain. So that's the kind of things they're doing. That's kind of what our, uh, it looks like heroin. It's usually more in chunks, like little rocks. We call it, you know, the rocks, but then they grind it up fine. Um, some of the things that they use this heroin in, there's uh, different ways. Uh, all that stuff is, is to relieve any pain they have in their body. Um, I'm gonna tell you that's what's gonna sell heroin, or that's what's gonna sell marijuana when it finally comes legal. They're gonna say that's our alternative pain medication. Just watch. Here's some of the things you might wanna look for at home, because this is how it's taken. Um, they'll actually melt it down. You see that's a little spoon. They'll put a few little crack rocks on there, melt it down, put it in a needle, then they can ingest it. They can actually just snort it also, but it is more effective put right into the vein. Um, here's some of the paraphernalia. Now it's really kind of hard to look at, but if you look in your kid's room, you remember those little tea lights you get, those ladies, those little lights that you get those little candles in and they got that little aluminum thing on the bottom. If you notice that your kid maybe went out and bought a bunch of tea lights and you're like, well, he's getting into candles, that's really nice. You know, he's making his room smell good and all that stuff. But you notice that he's maybe keeping those little tins. Those little tins become cookers. They'll cook their little crack rocks in there because they come out perfect. Heats up real nice, can throw it away. You can get them for about $2 for about 40 little tea lights, right? So he's got his cookers, and then you got little corner cut bags. You'll see that, you'll see baggies that are actually tore off at the bottom, and they use the little corners because they don't need the whole bag. And you'll look for other things like maybe they have some, something to wrap around their arm, um, like a tourniquet type thing or a rubber band or things like that. And what they'll actually use too is sometimes they'll use those little bands they get that say, support the police department or something. Pull it up. Gets a little tight up around the arm. Does what it's supposed to do. Um, in 2015, in West Dallas, just in West Dallas, we had nine confirmed deaths. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that was just in West Dallas. That doesn't count Tosa, that doesn't count Waukesha, that doesn't count New Berlin, nothing like that. Just West Dallas. But in this year, we already have 25. And I talked to Troy, he's the guy that put this presentation together because we just had a heroin death just yesterday also. This was from a 26 year old. Um, and here's what's amazing. As a police officer, we can come into a house and we pretty much know what's going on on a regular basis. You'll walk in here and here's a 26 year old that died with a guy my age. Why is she there? It's sugar daddy. He can come up with just enough money to get her fix all the time. Okay, that's what happens. You know, and oftentimes the, the guy my age is the guy that's actually taking it himself, too. And then his son comes home who's 18 years old and sees him. Fentanyl, that's what they add into this stuff. Now it's much stronger. You guys heard about that from the doctor. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about that. It's often mixed in there to make it stronger. Uh, again, that's why you're seeing some of those high levels they're talking about in the beginning five or 10 percent, up to 30 percent, now up to about 65 percent. So they just add it, make it a little bit more strong. That's kind of what the fentanyl looks like, these little uh, <coughs> things here. So it's, it's these guys that are putting this and making this, they're making it better and they're gonna continue to jump forward on how they make it and they're going to make it better. Like I said, I think this problem's going to get worse before it gets better. Like I said, we. Just today, I probably have a big garbage bag now full of uh, prescription drugs that I'm gonna be taking, we're gonna get rid of. Ultimately, that's getting rid of drugs that kids in school are not going to have. Okay, because that is where they start. We'll actually have kids have what they call farm parties. And when I say farm parties, I don't mean like the farm with the cow and the horses and the pigs. They have what they call pharmacy parties, but they call them farm parties. They'll take whatever they get from mom and dad's house grandma and grandpa's house, they throw it in a bowl. And sometimes they call them Skittle parties because if you ever throw all those fancy medications together, they all look very colorful and really cool. And they'll just take handfuls of them, put them in your mouth, swallow and drink them. They have no idea what it is. 
It affects everybody. So don't think, again, don't, you can see your next door neighbor and you can think, oh, that's a real nice guy. I live out in Waukesha, I live in a nice neighborhood. Things like that don't happen. It happens everywhere. I think the bigger problem is out farther out than it is right in the city here. Okay, I think they have more access to doctors, more access to medication, and ultimately, they end up needing more heroin. Questions, anybody? Oh, I just wanted to show you, for parents, parents and stuff, these are some, uh, if you didn't see these when I came in, you happen to go in a kid's room, you think they may be involved in drugs or they may be involved in stuff. I want you to start being aware. If you happen to see the little tin cookers on the bottom of, uh, um, you know, those little tea candles, you see them starting to save them. Or if you happen to see, why does my son have the shaving cream always sitting there? Well, don't always look at things just normal. Start to look at them like, oh because I hide my stuff in here, okay? They buy these things right online. These, if you look online, now when I show you this one, uh, don't just think of Arizona tea, think of Monster, or think of all those fancy things that your kid might drink and just wonder, okay, oh, he loves that Monster, I'll tell you, he loves that Monster. It's got stuff inside here, okay? This is a creative one. This one just came from Nathan Hale the other day. You know this ax? You spray a little bit of this on and the chicks just swarm around you. No, didn't you guys see that on TV? That's how it works. But he had his ax and he had it in his locker just like anybody else except when you take the cover off of his ax and the little sprayer on there, you just pull that up and that's where he had his... He made that one himself. The only reason we caught that is because he had a few pills left in here. And when we went to shake the axe, it didn't sound like liquid. Last one's peanut butter. Same type of thing. Look inside. Feels like peanut butter. Okay, so if you guys have a feeling, if you, you know that feeling is apparent, that something just isn't right, look a little further look a little bit past the very obvious things and ask yourself why does he have that monster drink sitting there all the time? Why does he have that crazy can of cologne or shaving cream sitting there all the time? Okay, open your mind up, look into things like this and please try to help us. You see something, I will tell you this, West Dallas Police Department, we will help you. We're not out to just beg everyone and give them arrests. We want kids to get help, and adults, and we will lead them the right way. Okay, thank you guys very much.